I start with, uh, the, the book started off as, as a project of mine. I just wanted to bring clarity to what happened to me after Stig died, because I couldn't understand it. And my sister forced me to write a diary after, after he died, because she said, if you don't do that, you'll remember absolutely nothing. It will just be blank, so you have to write. So I wrote every day. And I just, I didn't understand what I was putting down in words, but uh, I thought maybe I would understand that later on. And that later on came about two, two and a half years after Stig died, when I really had to understand what had happened to me, because I was disinherited and things started to happen uh, without my knowledge. And um, I wanted also to understand how far I've come in my grieving process. It takes time, these things, when you lose somebody you've been together for so long. So it started off as, as, uh, as my way of, of um, putting those handwritten diaries uh, into my computer and look at it. And while doing that, I started to wonder about stakes in my life. What we had done together and what signified us and why we met and why we stayed together for so long. So I'm going to read you the very first thing I wrote in looking back. It may not be what you think, but it's significant. It's called Speaking of Coffee. People of, often ask me if, if uh, the Swedish drink as much coffee as the characters do in the Millennium Trilogy. Well, we uh, drink a lot of it indeed, given that Finland is the only country in the world that consumes more coffee than we do. And if I had to single out just one thing in common between Stig Larsson and Mikael Blomqvist, it would surely be their impressive daily quota of coffee. Stig and I shared this addiction, which dates from our childhood. Stig's grandmother began giving him coffee openly when he was five years old, when children ordinarily drink milk. And my grandmother did the very same but more discreetly since my mother was still around. Coffee was, for both of us, an extraordinary remedy for all kinds of misfortunes, great or small. Synonymous with intimacy, conviviality, hospitality, it accompanied our moments of happiness as well as our long, long conversations with each other, with each other or friends. In the course of our 32 years together, I think we were largely responsible for the Swedish coffee industry's handsome profits. Although we experimented with every possible way of preparing the brew, we always fell back on percolated coffee. In our home, a coffee pot sat permanently on the stove. These days, I don't fix coffee for myself anymore. It's silly to fill only half a coffee pot, and um, besides, the empty half means that Stig will never again look at me over the rim of his cup, his eyes twinkling with curiosity, like a child who's just been given a present. Never again will I hear him say, so tell me, what did you do today? What new things have you discovered? In the Millennium Trilogy, Lisbeth Salander sometimes breaks off a discussion with Mikael Blomqvist by saying, I'll think about it. The first time I read that, I burst out laughing. Because whenever Stig and I reached an impasse during a serious argument because I couldn't, wouldn't adopt his point of view, I would always wound up saying the same words. These words meant that it was time to move on to a more neutral and pleasant conversation. So at this signal, one of us would immediately get up to go and make a pot of coffee, and we'd be friends again. This little passage was the first one I wrote besides the diaries, and from then on it expanded into more memories of who we were, uh, why we met, uh, what went into this long life together, into millennia. And I think uh, this might The, the random way that my book came about is very similar to the random way that Millennium came about. 
There was no big plan. So I included that non-existent big plan too in my book. And this is how Millennium started. Stig did not sit down one day at his computer and announced, I'm going to write a crime novel. In a way, he never even formally began to write one at all because he never drew, an up, drew up an outline for the first book or the next two, still less for the seven he intended should follow. Stig wrote sentences that, sequences that were often unrelated to the others. Then he would stitch them together, following the thread of the story and his inclination. It all began in 2002, during a week's island vacation. I could see he was a bit bored. I was working on my book about the Swedish architect Hallman, uh, but Stig was at loose ends, going around in circles. So I asked him, haven't you got some writing to work on? No, he said. But I was just thinking about that piece I wrote in 1997, the one about the old man who receives a flower in the mail every year at Christmas, remember? Yeah, of course. I've been wondering for a long time what that was really about. Stay got right to it and we spent the rest of the week working outdoors on our computers with the sea before our eyes and grass beneath our feet, happy. And this is actually how it started. There was no big plan, there was just an idea to, to understand what had gone into a text written uh, in 1997 to understand who this old man was, to understand who was sending the flowers and why. And it sort of just expanded from there. Uh, Steve was also a very sort of good craftsman at writing. He, he normally didn't write fiction. He wrote uh, articles as a journalist or, or reports for um, different universities and, and research institutes. Uh, and that's a different kind of language, so this was his first long try, without even trying to, to write fiction, write long fiction. But being a good craftsman uh, doesn't mean that you automatically have something to say. Uh, the books, the Millennium books, there are almost 2,000 pages and they were written in 24 months. <coughs> Uh, the only way you can do that in 24 months is that you're able to write, you write fast, uh, you have a good, good grasp of, of how to make a story unfold, but also you have a lot of, of uh, re research already done. A lot of knowledge you just pour into it, a uh, lot of interesting uh, people you've met or worked with uh, who have interesting traits you can use. Uh, you have a vast knowledge of politics and, and uh, injustices in society. Uh, Stig also had a vast knowledge of, of the discrimination against women that was uh, becoming more and more um, visible in Sweden, especially since the government ordered a study done, which showed that violence against women was much more um, usual than, than anyone thought. And that also became the second theme for my book, to, to explain what, what in our life went into millennium, uh, to sort of demystify the writing of, of these six books, and maybe to, to give the readers of millennium some answers to uh, things they've been wondering about, but maybe also to inspire people to try to write themselves, because everyone has a story to tell. And it's not really that difficult. You just have to sit down and do it. Maybe you have to do it many times, but it's doable. Everything is doable if you set your mind to it. So that's how my book, this book started. This is how Millennium started.